Let's go ahead and take a look at what we've done to make this transition as smooth as possible for you. When you log into Control Hub, you will see a message like this saying you're ready to update to the WebEx app. You can click on the blue button or you can come to the Updates tab and click on Update WebEx Meetings to the new WebEx and click Get Started. Once you're here, we have a few steps that we would like you to go ahead and look at before doing the update. If you're looking for more information, we can give you more information here on how we schedule your site to be updated and on which release. If you have a test site that you would like to test this update process, we can help you with this as well. For example, we recommend going to your test site and updating that one first. You can leave the update release that we have chosen for you. You can go ahead and choose the Update Now button if you would like. Or you can switch the, re the release version to the one that you feel more comfortable with. Just hit Save and the changes are made. Once you've tested and you feel comfortable with this process and the result, it is time to either choose a release version for your production site or leave the one that we have chosen for you. As you can see, those options are available on your production site as well. Please do remember that if you are going to change your release version, you are going to have to update it seven days before your scheduled release version is due. If not, you will not be able to change the release version that you run. Please keep this in mind. So that actually would be it on the configuration to select your update release cycle. The other configurations I want to talk about, they're extremely recommended because it will give you a best experience in the WebEx app for both users and you, the admin. Most of those configurations, you can view the status if they're configured or not on the overview tab on their getting started guide. So let's go ahead and take a look. From here, you can see if you have your domain claim and verify. You can see if you've set up a license template. You should be able to see if you have SSO, hybrid calendar. So I wanna go ahead and just dive a little deeper in each of the, the sections that I just mentioned. Let's go ahead and start with user licensing. User licenses you can configure in two places. You can configure them as a group or you can configure them per user. Here under licenses, you can configure or check if you have a template set up. That's how you configure groups. This template will apply to any new user that gets added to your organization. If you're coming from WebEx site admin, your meeting licenses will still be managed there. For any other workflow, those licenses will be configured in Control Hub. For example, if you add a new user, you can have basic consumer license, which is basically free. For messaging, you can have advanced licenses, or you can go ahead and even disable messaging workflow completely by just on clicking on basic messaging license. You do have to be very careful to make sure you've tested this before disabling any of the workflows. Because for example, if you disable messaging on this workflow, it will automatically disable the ability to have space meetings, which is one of the new features that comes with the WebEx app. This option of disabling workflows is not GA in Control Hub as of now. If you want to do this, you can also configure the licenses per user basis. Let me go ahead and take you over to organizational settings to show you domain claim and verify. You would go ahead and look for domains. This is where you actually would add a DNS record to your public DNS, and we would go out and verify that record is available. Once we're able to verify that this record is there, you can claim 
and verify your domain. It's as simple as that. Now I want to talk to you about single sign-on. You would also configure that here under organizational settings. You would look under authentication. And as you can see here, for this domain, we already have it configured. But how it works is basically you would look to do a SAML agreement metadata exchange with an IDP of your choice. Once you have that configured, SSO will work for your WebEx app. The next thing I want to go ahead and talk about is user provisioning. There are multiple ways that you can add users into Control Hub. The most recommended way is enabling directory connector, like we have done for this org. What this does is that it brings users from Active Directory into Control Hub. And you can manage users from Active Directory, and it becomes the single source of truth for user provisioning. Again, this is the most recommended way to manage users, but it's not the only way. That being said, let's go ahead and move on. The next service I want to go ahead and talk about is Hybrid Calendar Service. You can find this configuration under the Hybrid tab. As you can see, you can enable this for Exchange, Office 365, and even Google Calendar. What enabling this service will do is it will synchronize your calendar service with the WebEx app calendar. You will be able to see all your meetings, WebEx and non-WebEx meetings, in your WebEx app calendar. This is another service that you can enable for the full organization or you can enable per user basis. Last, I would like to talk about calling behavior. This setting configures the way that the WebEx app can make calls. The WebEx app support various call engines for PSTN calls, like UCM calling and WebEx calling. By default, and with no charge to your organization, your calling in WebEx is enabled, which allows you to make non-PSTN calls from WebEx app to other WebEx app users with in the app.